The year is 1991. This is a Kia Pride and it's a brand new car just gone on sale in Britain. The very first Kia to go on sale in Britain. Stylish? No. No, not, not really. Not really. I actually quite like that. But that's not the main reason why I'm here today. I'm here today for this. This is Kia Today 2021, 30 years on. One of the biggest giants in the car making world and one of the leaders, in fact, in electric cars. I'm Johnny Smith. Welcome to The Late Break Show. Here we go then. Kia's first ground up EV, because of course, until now, what they've been doing is adapting a piston car. So the Kia Soul EV or the Kia e Nero, both fantastic cars as, as EVs, but not ground up EVs. The EV6, this is the all new thing, and this is a bigger car. Um, this particular test version is all wheel drive. So it's got motor front, motor rear, but every single EV6 going on sale in the UK will have the, the bigger battery pack, the 77.4 kilowatt hour battery pack. There is a 58 kilowatt hour battery pack on sale in different markets, I believe. So the rear wheel drive car is 225 PS. This one, the four wheel drive is 325 PS. Um, of output, 605 newton meters. Now, if you watch my review of the Ionic 5, you'll know that these are wide cars, uh, both of them, exactly the same width, actually. Um, and I haven't driven either of these. I'm not gonna get a big chance to drive this today. And I didn't drive the Ionic 5 as far as I would have liked to. But I can immediately tell with the EV6, it is slightly sharper in the steering, um, heavier, and the damping is slightly harder, firmer. Um, and that's not a bad thing because the Ionic 5 from memory is, was a little bit on the soft side. Although like the Ionic 5, these are both not totally finished. Okay, so I'm now reversing for a Land Rover Discovery. And luckily I've got tons of, tons of cameras on the EV6, including ones on the bottoms of the mirror, which helps you position the car. Um, I really like these wing mirrors. They've got sort of um, an, a concave indent and then, a, and then a sharp, obviously aero-inspired edge to them. They're a bit like sort of Cleopatra's eye makeup. So there's two forms of regen braking um, methods. I can use the smart uh, eco that uses the, the sat nav and it decides where I should probably harvest as much energy as possible or I've got the paddles. I've got two paddles and I can adjust, I think, six adjustments of regen. It's so cool that all the versions that go on sale in the UK of the EV6 have over 300 mile WLTP range. That's such a big range. You know, the rear wheel drive model, uh, 328 miles of, of range. It's massive, massive. This particular version, 5.2 seconds to 62. There is going to be a GT version, which will be three and a half seconds 62 so the real quick one but that won't be out till end of 2022 maybe beginning of 2023 so what is the kia ev6 well the ev6 is the brother really to the hyundai ionic 5 one of the coolest cars i think that's come out in years if you want my full detailed review of that car i'll put a link above my head it's been one of my most successful videos this car then shares the underpinnings of that this is actually ever so slightly longer 
than uh, the Ionic 5. And what I would say is, before we go into the design, is uh, the EV6 is a better looking car in reality, I think, than in pictures. I was a bit worried about it in pictures. So based on this eGMP, eGIMP, um, new infrastructure, new platform, um, you can buy this in uh, rear wheel drive or all wheel drive, so twin motor or, or single motor. This particular test car is twin motor. Okay, frontal design. First things first, the car I'm testing is the only right hand drive car available at the moment. It's the only one and it's in this satin grey. So it does look a little different in satin, but I quite like it. Brushed aluminium uh, Kia badge looks premium. I'm still getting used to the new Kia logo. I don't know about it. Um, but this Kia Tiger face has been reinterpreted for the digital era, they say. You've got the daytime running lights here that are very complicated. Lots of slashes, dots and dashes that go all the way around there. Very narrow because that's not a, an open grill. It's a closed grill with a cam there. They've got sequential indicators front and rear. And then down here, you've got another thing for the, for the radar, for the cruise control. And these sort of big, chunky parts of the grill. And I think the bottom bit is actually an opening. Yeah, that's an opening down there with like a sort of chin spoiler. This steering wheel with a sort of two spoke, which I like with the chrome kind of beading that goes around it, I quite like. I'm going to stick it in. You see you've got eco mode, sport mode. You've got snow mode as well. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's time for a zero to 62 run. There's no traffic. I'm going to put the stats of all of the versions of, of this on screen. Three, two, one, go. Sixty-two. So that's 5.2. It's good. It's good. I like that. I like that. I like that. I think that like I said, five seconds to 62 is quick. In the real world, it's plenty punchy enough, 605 Newton meters. You've got that option of four wheel drive if you want it. It's just good to have options, isn't it? I do think we're increasingly in a world now where you look at, you know, you, you look at the pre what the premium brands are offering, traditional premium brands, and you're looking what guys like Kia and Hyundai are putting out, and you do have to think, is, why would you pay more for the for the badge? Because this badge is, has done some incredible things. This company makes everything from decent plug-in hybrids to decent small EVs with good range, the Soul, the E Nero, that kind of thing, and then brings a car like this to market. There's a lady on an e-bike. This is where it gets interesting. It's classed as a crossover. Remember, I'll put the dimensions above here. It is um, 4.7 um, meters long, near as damn it. So it's, it's a big car. Um, kind of reminds me, and the same with the cameraman, Nick. He said, it kind of reminds me of a Jag I-Pace, especially as we go down to the rear. It's quite fast backy, and it's quite jaggy with these. Jaguar Land Rover. And what I would say about these door handles that pop out when you unlock it, they don't feel very nice to the touch. But I have to say this car is pre-production. This isn't a finalized version. This is a GT line trim, um, but it has, I believe this has got the 20s on it. Yes. You can choose between a couple of different trim levels and I will put them on screen. Uh, you've, got, you've got Air, which is the entry level rear wheel drive model. You've got a GT line and then you've got a GT line S. And within those, you can choose rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. But basically prices start in the sort of mid forties and they go up to just over 51 grand. Top spec cars get like ventilated seats, um, heated rear seats, the Meridian 14 speaker stereo, uh, heads up display or head up, sorry, display, pano roof, uh, and stuff like that. They all get seven year warranty. So the 20 inch wheels are available on the higher spec cars and actually the 20 inch wheels are relevant in so much as um, they, you can see they've covered up the, the bolt holes in the middle, which I quite like. They've got the plastic inserts like so many of these eco cars, but having the 20s makes the range of the car lower. Um, in fact, if you have the all wheel drive 
On the 20s, it's 302 miles WLTP. On 19s, it's 314. Uh, and if you go for the rear wheel drive on 19s, you get 328 miles, which is probably the one that I'd go for. So you've got this crossover silhouette. They call this a character line, but basically I just call it the waistline of the car. It goes all the way along. This has all been blacked out and it goes up and they've blacked that out and that, yeah, that is still a window, but this part obviously isn't a window. So this detail that goes into the tailgate, it sort of takes your eye away from the profile. But yet at the top here, you've got a really lovely, I think really nice design, um, semi-floating spoiler that comes out, protrudes out, and then goes down there over the rear window. And this is for ultimate aero. But there's a rib around here, a double rib and a crease that comes off these, um, these roof rails. I just think it's a good touch. That fast back rear end, obviously good for aerodynamics. And you've got this extra mad little lip spoiler, which is in fact a protruding rear light cluster. I won't talk too much about the boot space. I'll do that in a minute. But basically that fastback does hinder the boot space a little, as you would probably expect. It's really bulbous. If you come around here, come around here and look down from this angle, there's a bit of 911. There's a bit of 911 going in there, I reckon. Look at it. Serious haunches for a family car. That looks like it's a charging port, but I don't think it is. Is it? Maybe it is. Hang on. It is. Bloody knew it. Knew it. So there, the charging port, weirdly, is, is on the back corner. It's not on the side. It's not on the front. It's not on the wing. And here it is. See how that? I don't like these. I don't like the way that you they pull these out and they just fall down. I prefer things like the BMW ones of a, a neat little hinged panel. But hey, what I do like is the status bar here. That's useful. So while I've got the door open, let's talk about charging because that's really important. The intriguing thing about this model oh, based on the E-GIMP um, underpinnings, the same as the Ionic 5, is it can flip between 800 and 400 volts. So it can support both, which makes it incredibly future-proof. It can rapid charge up to 350 kilowatts. Again, massively future-proofing buying this car. I obviously thought I'd got bored. Maybe I'm boring it. Um, it can do 10 to 80% of charge in 18 minutes at 350 kilowatts, if you can find it. But obviously that rapid charge system is, is being rolled out. 62 miles in five minutes that gives you, which is game changing. Let's look at the back end of the EV6. I, I like the font actually. What I would say is, I think this, is, this was the most awkward part in the pictures when I first saw the release of it. And I was thinking, oh, I don't know. But actually, it looks good in the metal. It, it's quite spacey and it's caught so much attention uh, today. I like it a lot. And this is concave. This bank is concave. And again, you've got the brushed aluminium sort of premium badge. Kia is doing amazing things. When you put this next to like that BMW iX3 that I tested recently, I mean, there's no comparison in terms of creativity, design creativity. Talking of which, Kia say their new design direction uh, opposites united draws inspiration from contrasts found in nature and humanity. It's very low that button. Interesting shaped boot aperture, right? And you've got these, you can see how pointed these lights are when you open it. So because it's a fastback, you've obviously got that shape to contend with. That boot there is 490 litres uh, without the subwoofer, which is the optional Meridian audio pack. With the subwoofer, which this one does have, it's 480 litres, okay? Compare that to its brother, the Ionic 5. That's got a 531 litre boot, so it's a bigger boot. There's a few cars with bigger boots than this. There is some extra storage. This stuff can be stowed elsewhere. Under here, you've got another bit here, false floor, what's this? Looks like a Kia branded clarinet. Oh no, right, yeah. Remember I said about V2L? Yeah, this is the nifty, and this is just, this is, we're gonna see this more and more on EVs. Look, you plug it in, you power your stuff. We could be out here camping. I could have a little extension lead, lights, music, gaming. 
lights, music, other stuff. <laughs> but honestly, this is the future. So your car becomes a mobile battery source. Frunk slash fruit. Oh no, there isn't. Oh yes, there is. Because as if by magic, you can lift up the engine. And in the engine is a quite small fruit, frunk, which is where I keep my house keys. Now, I've got to say this. There's two sizes of fruit slash frunk in the EV6. It depends whether you go single motor, rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. And because this is all wheel drive, there's a motor under there and that makes that 20 litres, which is tiny. Um, if you specify it as a rear wheel drive, you get 56 litres, which is actually a usable space. In the meantime, I'll just put my notebook in there, personalised, available from the Late Break Show merch shop. Plug over. So, in, a, in the way that the Ionic 5 is a little bit sort of 80s almost uh, on the outside, the inside of this has got some 80s to it, I think. These diagonal stripes, uh, they look like a sort of 80s duvet set, <laughs> sporty duvet set. This is behind the plastic. And then this, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's actually properly sort of corduroy-esque rubberized fabric. You've got this curved screen that goes all the way round like this. Um, I like the design of it actually at first. Um, and a two-spoke steering wheel, which again, people will know I'm a bit of a fan of. They're unusual, but I do like them. You've got your drive mode right here and you've got your pedals for regen braking, but I'll talk more about those when you're driving. This is the best bit of the inside. It's a floating centre console and a pretty detailed one at that. Two cup holders. I've got my coffee cup here, my recycled one. Angled um, and brushed aluminium on off button with touch sensitive, I think, yeah. Heated and ventilated seats. Now on the top spec cars, you get ventilated seats and heated back seats. The lower ranking ones you don't. So here we go. This is touch screen here. These are touch screen here, like I said before, and you can flip between the normal um, radio and media and nav to your um, climate. Up here, there's a lot going on. It's busy, it's busy. Um, you can go into normal EV mode and it's very detailed on where all the charging spots are. You've got your option for, for vehicle to load, V2L, and it will tell you um, all about stuff like that. But I have to say, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering whether this is all too touch screeny. There's, there's a couple of physical buttons, not many, and you've got a rotary dial here to go from park to reverse to neutral and drive, etc., which is cool. And there's a big, I nearly forgot about it, how could I? Because it's a flat floor, there's this huge storage bin down here between the seats with two cigarette type lighters in it. Oh no, USB-C and a cigarette lighter. And then a further two USBs in the front there. I think this, the screens look great and I'm sure they'll be fine while I'm driving. My worry is that this is a little fussy and it's actually quite narrow. I don't have big hands and I'm finding it a bit complicated. Oh, and your phone, wireless charging pad here for your phone. And another incredibly deep door bin down there. It's so deep I actually can't see the bottom of it. It's a bit like a wishing well. Look, totally flat floor. And that's what we're talking about. That's why the e-gimp is so good. I've got muddy feet. The top spec models of the EV6 will have the panoramic roof, but there's loads of headroom in here. The thing you notice more than anything is the slimness of the front seats. Kia have tried to make these extra slim. They're hard backed and actually this plastic is not particularly nice, but this is a pre-production car, don't forget. But there's some really neat features. This is a grab handle and in the side here is the USB C's. They're not down there, they're in there, which is really, really cool. Plus, I notice you can recline uh, and adjust these seats, which is great, especially for children, because you can have them quite upright for young kids, which I like. This fabric is made from recycled uh, plastic bottles. 111 bottles, they say, have gone into creating the textiles in here. And I just think this sort of innovation is only a good thing. And it just feel, it feels really premium. Similar to the Ionic 5, that, that, that has the same thing. These remind me of E.T. Do they remind you of it? I mean, look at the side profile. It looks like E.T. It looks like I'm sat behind E.T. It's a little bit freaky.
Anyway, enough of the EV6. What you want to know about is the Pride. Well, it's weird getting in a car of this era. You realise realize what a budget car of the late 80s, early 90s felt like. And uh, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's actually quite nippy. 800 kilos, 60 horsepower. This is the 1.3 LX Pride. But I remember these cars were sort of the laughing stock when they came out. And that just goes back to, I think, just a bit of a prejudice. Basically, a prejudice against a badge which they didn't really, people didn't really understand, certainly in the UK, and it being a value brand. It was just about good value brand new car. That's all it was about. And there's always going to be a type of person that just wants a brand new car rather than a second-hand, more premium badge. But you know what? It's, it's actually a lot quicker than I was expecting. And the brakes are keener than I was expecting. It was really just a small white good of a car. 12-inch wheels, and I remember vividly it came on white walls. Sadly, this car isn't on white walls because 12-inch white walls are no longer available. Um, and <laughs> I think we've come a long way in 30 years, it's safe to say. Who needs uh, cutting edge technology in the EV6 when you've got a tape player that's removable from Clarion and you've got heating and two horn buttons and oh and a digital clock, quartz, because it says so. And a, not, nothing else, <laughs> simply nothing else. A bit of a mysterious squeak around this part. I feel like wearing this orange hoodie and driving this car, I feel like I'm on my way to a rave. And I've maybe totally lost track of time. And I don't realize that it's 2021. They were the laughing stock in the same way that back in the 70s, if you had a Datsun in the UK or a Toyota, there was a lot of people that looked down on you, thought it was a daft idea. Um, gosh, trucks feel big. They look big in this. These very thin little spindly pillars. Now, Kia is the oldest manufacturer, car manufacturer in Korea. It started off in 1944 manufacturing bicycles, um, light goods vehicles, all, all sorts of stuff. Um, and used to m build cars, existing cars, um, under their name. That's what this is. This Pride is it's a Ford slash Mazda design. It's a Mazda 121 rebadged and slightly re-engineered. It's weird how far we've come, isn't it? A brand like Kia, you look at this little badge with the wavy um, chimney smoke on the K, which is what it represented, sort of Kia industry. How far have we come now looking at that EV6? You know, real, at the technological pinpoint of um, EV. Kia's and Hyundai's EV is right up there. It's funny that a car company can do so much in such a short space of time, you know, 30 years from that, to a car which can power other things using its own source, that's got good handling, incredible space, style, a desirable badge beyond actually a lot of German manufacturers. You would have never predicted that. The EV6 to me is an exciting car. I think there's a lot to like here. I think there's an awful lot going on. I think it's usable and it starts at 40,000 quid for a 314 mile range EV that's good to drive, that's got a seven year warranty, that's 40 grand. That is impressive. 
for me, the only thing which holds me back from wanting to pull the trigger on a car like this is its brother, the Hyundai Ioniq 5. Because for me, that car just dynamically probably not quite as good as this, not quite as sharp, but in everything else, for me, it just hits the spot. I hope you've enjoyed this review on the Late Break Show. These reviews are proudly sponsored by Continental Tires. If you haven't already subscribed, why not subscribe? Do you like this car? What do you think of the EV6? Would you rather have this, the Ionic 5, or another car in its category? Thanks for watching.